Hello, today I want to talk a little bit about the transmission range in wireless networks because there are a lot of myths and uh, also assumptions which are not, not right. Uh, when I, for example, ask students to make a presentation about Bluetooth and Zigbee or Thread and so on, I getting different values for what the transmission range is in these networks. And in this video I want to clear this a little bit up. The first thing, what means transmission range? Yeah, we're having there two nodes uh, in this case and a transmitter sends the signals that can be read by the receiver without major disruption. This we would call transmission rate. Uh, but normally in wireless networks we want to have two-way communication. So this means that the communication can go in both directions without major disruption. And this we would call transmission rate. At least uh, a direct transmission rate in this point. Yeah, of course in wireless networks there are different kind of topologies um, where you can extend the range, um, like in a mesh network we're having routers or sometimes they are just relay nodes or repeater and then of course we can extend the range of the network um, when the range between two direct nodes is for example uh, 50 meters then with um, two routers we can then have a range from uh, three times 50 meters so it would be mean 150 meter in one direction yeah uh, so if you want to build up a network you have always to keep in mind how you arrange your modules there are a lot influences what can ha yeah, have an influence in the uh, range the transmission range um, there is, for example, a reflection on walls, for example. Uh, this is even sometimes used from like mobile providers. They, they use the effect to getting then in special areas a better signal. And uh, we have something which is called uh, diffraction, when there are edges and the signals um, going then on the edges in this direction. Or penetration, we're getting a lower signal um, after the signal is penetrated because uh, yeah, the penetration taking from the energy, from the signal energy and we're having also something which is scattering so when we're hitting an object so that it's going in multiple directions and the signal then has of course there less power than the original signal because it's split up in more signals and all these influences together yeah, have them the influence on the range, of course. Yeah. The best way uh, where you're getting the most range is, of course, when you're having a line of sight and um, where you build up which something which is called Fresnel zone. Yeah. Here's an example. So uh, here we're having like an uh, on a hill um, tour. Uh, modules and you think that we are building here Fresnel zone without any interruption um, uh, and influence on the origin signal. And there is a formula for calculating since the distance. I arrange it already through the distance. The formula looks a little bit different. Uh, this is a simplified freeze formula because I uh, estimate here an antenna gain factor set to 1 this means an ideal isotropic antenna, yeah, which you nearly, yeah, you don't have this in, in practice. But you're seeing here on this kind of formula, I mean there are more formulas um, which can calculate the distance. Some have, uh, have also factor uh, on the area which you are sending, if it's in the city or outside and, um, and so on. But this one here is just um, where a Fresnel zone can build up and uh, so the maximum transmission range nearly, I mean it's an experimental uh, equation so they got that this equation through experiments and uh, yeah, 
it's more or less accurate, but it's already quite can quite good estimate the distance. And you're seeing here in the formula we're having the wavelength and the transmit power and the receive power. So the question then is Bluetooth better than Thread or Zigbee or not and so on. When you're seeing here in this formula then um, of course the modulation has a slight influence on the distance yeah and uh, of when you are having a more stable modulation like um, binary uh, key shifting or something then you're getting a slightly better range than uh, when you're having a more complex modulation and so on but the influence is really not big and this means with the same transmit power and receive power you're getting with the same wavelengths also the same uh, transmission range. This means Bluetooth uh, and Thread for example they're working all in 2.4 gigahertz and also Zigbee when it's working in 2.4 gigahertz then you're getting the same range with the modules. Here's an example calculation I uh, take here a transmit power from 10 dBm uh, and receiver sensitivity from minus 100 dBm. Uh, I have to convert it in Watt. Uh, if you are interested how is this is all working a little bit more into details, I uh, recommend you can take a look in my book here. Yeah, I describe it a little bit in more details. Uh, I yeah, would like uh, <laughs> when you buy it also that you give a good review on it. It would make me a little bit <laughs> yeah, happy. So back to the calculation. Then you're seeing here we're having a wavelength from, uh, for 2.4 gigahertz and then the wavelength is um, 0 0.125 meters or so 12.5 centimeters. And when I put this here inside, I get around 1000 meter for the transmission range. Uh, I can, of course, get higher or lower value when the transmit power or the receiver sensitivity is a little bit uh, bigger or uh, yeah, lower. This means with an amplifier, I can adjust this and I will come to this later and I can get there a little bit more range. When we're seeing here a wavelength for the 900 megahertz frequency we're having then the wavelength from uh, 33 centimeters and you're seeing here directly the factor then is around uh, 2.7 higher yeah? so then we would get, get with the same transmit power and receiver sensitivity around 2.7 uh, kilometers. Yeah. Um, and there we can now go into the range comparison and this is actually quite interesting because especially for Wi-Fi for example having say 5.8 gigahertz and Wi-Fi 2.4 gigahertz and a lot of people like to use the 5.8 gigahertz because the transmission rate is higher in this network but actually even with 2.4 gigahertz your transmission rate in your network is higher than you have normally uh, the internet connection so uh, and now you know that you're needing lower energy for sending at the same range um, and you're getting more range also when you sh with the same transmit power uh, with the lower frequency. So when I have an access point for example I normally try to deactivate the 5.8 gigahertz because the range is worse and I don't need this uh, fast rate. This is only for a few networks really interesting when you're having a lot yeah, devices and uh, you're having your own server where you have to connect and so on. But for normal use cases, 2.4 gigahertz is even the better solution. We're seeing here 
indoor we're getting there around fi 50 meter and 300 meter outdoor and it's 5.8 it's nearly the half yeah? um, you can extend the range through a mesh but this is quite new technique and um, you have to set this up so this is why it's not really a um, built for a mesh um, but it's possible now the same counts for Bluetooth. There's also a Bluetooth mesh, uh, which is yeah also not a hundred percent mesh network because it's just forwarding all the messages, so you're having there a lot of traffic. Uh, but we're having there then also the range from around 50 meter indoor and 30 to 300 meter outdoor. The same counts for Zigbee, but this is a real mesh network, so we can extend there the range. And what the people don't get is that Zigbee, uh, there are also a few modules which are working in the 900 megahertz um, frequency band. And this means you get much wider range with lower consumption, which is for wireless sensor networks really quite interesting. And um, this counts actually for the IEEE 802.50.4 standard altogether. Yeah. Um, yeah, and thread. Uh, unfortunately, thread is at the moment only defined for the. I mean, it's using also the so IEEE 802.50.4 uh, standard, but uh, it's only defined for the 2.4 gigahertz at the moment. So uh, we have their limitation. This is the advantage a little bit from Zigbee, yeah. uh, but they can adapt this later maybe or I mean there's no reason why you shouldn't use actually also the 900 megahertz frequency bin band for example. Uh, quite interesting is LoRa which uh, can also work uh, in 433 megahertz and the typical range indoor is maybe 120 meters but outdoor you're getting five kilometers or even 50 kilometers depends a little bit on the condition uh, but you cannot make mesh network with this but for sensor networks of course also quite interesting and there is even a Loran one record with uh, I think the maximum allowed um, amplifiers or uh, the transmission power and two balloons in the air, where you're getting then the optimal transmission rate with the Fresnel zone and so on, and this is crazy 838 kilometer, which is really far. Yeah. But um, this is only in the lower frequency band when you're using higher. I mean, in a few countries you cannot use this because of the legal rights and so on. So it's a little bit complicated and it's has no mesh structure. And all these are only the typical values. Yeah? Um, for example, I built up a Zigbee device with an amplifier uh, and there I could extend the range from the 2.4 gigahertz to um, around 100 meter indoor and uh, 650 meter outdoor. Uh, I have here an example for this. Yeah, there you're using, when you're having the antenna output here, I used in this case an RF6555 from Corvo, I think it was. It's an amplifier and an LNA, and there I could exchange, uh, extend the range. But of course, it's needing much more power. Yeah. Another solution is for example which is quite interesting from Nordic they're having there also already a device yeah it is um, the developer board is called NIF 50 uh, 21540 and there is actually our well-known NIF 52840 chip and the amplifiers, the NIF 21540 on the 
uh, on the output from the antenna. And there they're making tests and they got also already outdoor crazy ranges from 2.8 kilometer. And we're thinking then you get really this kind of rate. I mean, they make it with Bluetooth. I think it's with Red, it will work uh, nearly the same. Then um, you can see when you're using f five routers in a row, getting already a uh, yeah, 10, 12 kilometers range network and so on. So it's quite interesting. I have also one from these kids here, yeah. So they are also quite affordable. Um, but I have only one, so I couldn't make the range test yet. Uh, but for wireless sensor networks, a quite interesting solution. Yeah, you see there are a lot of factors which influence the transmission range. Uh, so a clear answer how far the transmission range is, is not easy uh, to give sometimes. But with all this information, you can try to set up a quite optimal network, uh, especially when you're making a mesh network where you have to place some modules and so on. Sometimes you have to try it out also. Um, for example, we uh, make also tests with Zigbee uh, modules in the 900 megahertz frequency band and got uh, ranges over four kilometers, but only in optimal uh, conditions are yeah, outside in line of sights, a little bit on the hill and so on. And these conditions are difficult to met. Uh, mostly uh, then in the city there are trees, there are buildings, sometimes something even change, the weather condition change and so on can all have influence on the transmission range. If you want to uh, get more information, you can take a look in my book. Uh, there are a few more details and also uh, something about the modulation techniques and so on. And we'll see you in the next video.